So I like what you say in your book, The Great Apostasy, regarding Constantine on uh, uh, page 20 and 21. It says, A.J. Tomlinson, as we have seen, blamed Constantine for preferring his own creed to the Bible, whereas Dan Brown says... Constantine invented the Christian Bible in the first place, whereas the Jehovah's Witnesses damn Constantine's counsel for fabricating the divinity of Christ. Mormons fault it for denying the divinity of Christ. Seventh day Adventists the divinity reproach of man. Yeah. Oh, yes. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry, That's divinity right, yeah. of man. You're right. Seventh day Adventists reproach Constantine for dropping too much of the Old Testament, and my own Baptist church blamed him for keeping too much. So it's like you name all these things that people blame Constantine for, but they all disagree on what. Constantine got wrong. I thought that was very interesting. Well, G.K. Chesterton uh, made a great quote, as he was known to do uh, years ago, about uh, about this subject. He says, "If you see the same man being simultaneously accused by different groups of being both too fat and too thin, you can be pretty sure that he's about the right size." <laughs> That's great. And uh, that's what's happened with Constantine and also with the Catholic Church. You find uh, equal and opposite errors, uh, contradict, mutually contradictory errors uh, being laid at Constantine's feet. And uh, uh, none of it makes a great deal of sense. That's why I would challenge people again to read the earliest Christians if you haven't, because when I've read the earliest Christians, I see them fighting fiercely against paganism, refusing to let even a little bit of paganism, anything that contradicts Christ into the church. And you have all top bishops and priests and apologists all fighting fiercely against that and refusing to have any part of that in the church. So the idea that they just willingly rolled over and accepted it all is just not historical. Uh, maybe before we end, you could talk about the uh, Council of Nicaea. Apparently, people have a lot of problems with the Council of Nicaea, and they attribute a whole lot of different things to it. Um, you know, what are some of the issues that people have with the Council? Well, there are records of the Council of Nicaea, which was held in 325. Some records do survive, but nothing like a an exhaustive minutes or uh, you know, nobody transcribed, uh, it, or if they did, they, it doesn't come down to us today, uh, the act, the full acts of the Council of Nicaea. All we know is that Constantine called it, which makes it suspect if he's the great Satan, you know. Uh, Constantine called the council. He asked all the bishops to, of the world to come to Nicaea in the Eastern Empire to uh, settle the controversy raised by Arius, who was a rogue presbyter of the Church of Alexandria in Roman Egypt. Uh, because it's a little shadowy what all the decrees were, we know that Arius was condemned. We know that all of the, almost all of the bishops present, uh, over 300, uh, uh, condemned his innovation, and uh, which we can't really go into the details of what was Arianism or whatever. But the council was almost entirely about this controversy created by Arius, okay? Uh, but there, because there's not exhaustive records of what was said, it's a perfect ink blot, okay? Constantine, not long after his conversion, called a council of all the world's bishops. Well, he must have laid down the law to them. He must have, uh, uh, you know, told them what the new order was going to be and all the rest of it. And all of that is just historically nonsensical. We're told that Constantine actually came into the council in a very humble way. He professed himself as a Christian layman to be ready to accept the verdict rendered by the Catholic bishops. Uh, they offered him a golden throne to sit on, and he said no. He asked for a low stool to be brought in where he could just sit and observe off in the sidelines. So the more you learn about the Council of Nicaea, the more a lot of this nonsense dries up and blows away. But there, to, needless to say, there's absolutely no truth in the idea that he, he just laid down the law on what the Bible should be, which book should go and which book should stay, or that he uh, all forced them all to accept the divinity of Christ. Uh, the Arian heresy does have something to do with the divinity of Christ. So a lot of people have said, well, that must have been it. They condemned Arianism, which did not teach the divinity of Christ. That isn't true, by the way. Common misconception is that Arian, Arian's teaching was against the divinity of Christ. Actually, he doubled down on the divinity of Christ 
he, the Arians fell over themselves trying to outdo the Orthodox in saying honorific things about Jesus. Uh, what it actually did was it simply denied that the son was co-equal with his father, that the divine son was co a co-equal eternal member of the Trinity uh, with, his, uh, with his father in heaven. The, uh, uh, so, which is, again, without going into it, it, it would take a long time to do justice to the subject and the, uh, which is why the book's 700 pages long, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, but sim let's put it sim as simply as possible because it's so necessary that Constantine should have come, stepped in and behaved in an authoritarian way and forced the bishops to toe the line, et cetera. That's so necessary to a good apostasy theory that people began to imagine that it's there when it really isn't. But there's no evidence for any of those things. Again, especially if you know what the church of the previous three centuries taught. If, if it taught Catholicism, then Constantine cannot have introduced Catholicism at the Council of Nicaea. And that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Yeah, very, very good points, especially uh, on the point of Constantine Really, there's a big misconception that Constantine kind of merged the church and state and they became one and he kind of became the first pope for people who really don't understand things. It's, or it's least... ironic for, a, for a, uh, a church that's very focused on the idea of getting the United States to govern in a Christian way, in a way that uh, lines up with, with uh, Christian values. It's very ironic that we find it so nefarious that Constantine sponsored Christian morals after uh, after he became Christian. He did. He immediately outlawed feeding prisoners to the lions in the arena anymore. He, uh, uh, he immediately outlawed branding prisoners on the face with a hot brand because he said that was contrary to the dignity of man and the image of God in man. So yes, Constantine began to sponsor Christian ideas, but in a way that most people would agree was a, was a good thing. So, yeah. uh, uh, but as he far would, as imposing a whole new religion or a whole new version of Christianity, that was exactly the opposite of what he, in fact, he was just about the least theological person that you could think of. He was a soldier, he was a general, and he didn't like philosophy. He didn't like theology. He turned all that over to the bishops and he said, that's, I may be the emperor, but all that's above my pay grade. And uh, that, was <laughs> his whole, that was his whole the way of working in this subject, but Again, you have to read the story of the times carefully and put all of this misinformation out of your mind before you can begin to see what actually happened in those days. Yeah, I um, I have a six volume history set by Warren Carroll behind us, and he talks extensively about how Constantine had a, a bishop, I believe it was Bishop Osius, who personally taught him theology, who personally Spaniard, was given to yeah. him to yeah. teach him what he was supposed to know. Yeah. Um, so and Osius like he... was respected all over the church. He was worldwide a considered a saintly uh, uh, teacher of Christianity who uh, had been in business for years. When Constantine was, he was a Christian clergyman when Constantine was in diapers. So uh, <laughs> the idea that Constantine dominated Hosius, it was actually the other way around. That's exactly right. Hi everyone, my name is Kate. I'm the video editor here at Catholic Truth, and I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for taking some time to watch our videos and learn more about your faith. You guys really make this channel possible, and we truly appreciate you being here. So thanks again, and God bless.